Swirls, spider webs, and love marks are common in varying degrees on almost every car. But there's always one guy at the car show that has perfect paint. And today I'm going to show you a few ways of how he does it. That's all coming up today on this episode of Drive Clean. Before we can start removing swirls, it's important to understand the advancement of buffling machines over the past few decades. As paint has evolved from single stage to two stage or clear coated, so have the power, speed and movement of the machines used to polish our cars. Here's a wide range of buffing machines starting with the rotary polisher. This is the industry standard Makita and Festool, both of which are great machines for the pro detailer. I consider this to be the scalpel of the polishing world because it's extremely effective in the right hands but completely devastating in the wrong or inexperienced hand. And the reason why is their direct drive, meaning once you pull the trigger, all the power is going to be directed to one spot and will quickly generate excess heat, which is a byproduct you're trying to minimize while buffing. For example, if you accidentally applied too much pressure to an edge or a corner, the pad and the machine are not gonna slow down and will burn through the paint quickly because all the heat is generated on the outer edge of the pad using this machine. They are, however, still used in the body shop industry for fast removal of heavy wet sanding marks, but for detailers, it can be overkill. As paints and painting techniques evolve, manufacturers use fewer mills of paint to actually coat the metal making these machines more and more dangerous to use because of the smaller margin of error. So the industry was forced to make a safer machine. These are dual action polishers. It spins and oscillates at the same time to minimize the heat byproduct, but more importantly, there's a clutch inside the housing that prevents the pad from spinning while it's on an edge or other dangerous spots. These machines are wildly popular because they're super safe and easy to use. So these are scalpels while these are butter knives. With a standard dual action polisher, as you reach an edge or other vulnerable area, the pad stops spinning, indicated by the black sharpie mark, and will only vibrate harmlessly to prevent burn through. Now as clear coats become thinner, manufacturers needed to compensate for the minimal paint with its hardness. So with harder paints, the dual action became less effective because they have less direct power. The next jump up in technology was to combine the power of the rotary with the dual action oscillation and what we call forced rotation dual action polishers. The dual action flex polisher shown here will not bog down because it's forced rotation, which can be useful in certain situations. Just when you thought there couldn't be any more polisher variations, the Roop's Bigfoot hit the market. This is a variation on the dual action or free spindle, meaning it will bog down to prevent someone from burning through the paint. However, this machine is unique because of its throw, which is the distance it travels from side to side. The Roop's has a wider 21 millimeter throw, while the Flex has an eight millimeter. Now this is the longer throw DA Roops polisher that will prevent burn through on these vulnerable areas, indicated again by the black sharpie mark that's standing still or slowly spinning, but has more power than the standard DA for faster paint correction. As a professional, the Flex is perfect for paint correction on hard paints or average cars while the Roops is perfect for extremely expensive vehicles because it's less powerful and it's not forced rotation, which is safer on irreplaceable paint jobs. So each has its pros and cons. So what's the bottom line? The Flex and the Roops are the two best polishers on the market. It really comes down to personal experience, preference, and of course your budget. Now, if you're a weekend warrior, save your money and go with the Griot's Garage Polisher, which is the best bang for your buck. There's a huge difference between correcting the swirls and covering them up. One is a repair, while the other is cosmetic makeup. Let me show you the difference. After inspecting the paint with a Brinkman light, there's no doubt the paint is in desperate need of a compounding. The first step is to tape off any surrounding areas you need to avoid, and in this demonstration, I'm also adding one strip of masking tape down the middle of the door to check our before and after progress. A common misconception about wax is that it'll remove swirls and scratches, but in reality, it's only an illusion. Wax simply fills in the scratches and reduces their appearance temporarily. 
On this panel, both sides are equally terrible, and I'm going to apply wax on the left side only. The point I'm trying to prove here is simply adding wax on top of scratches will only temporarily hide the imperfections. After I pull the tape up, the waxed side obviously looks much better, but clearly not perfect. By using a one-to-one -one mixture of isopropanol and water, I can simulate the effects of a mechanical car wash by removing the wax or the fillers used to hide the swirls, revealing the original scratched paint. Now I receive a lot of emails asking why swirls keep coming back after a few washes. And think of it this way, it's similar to putting makeup on your face and then washing it off at the end of the day. When you go to a car wash, you're gradually pulling off the wax. Now that we understand that wax is purely cosmetic, let me walk you through the proper steps of actually removing the scratches. Now just for kicks, we're going to be using the two best polishers I mentioned at the start of the episode. On the left side here, I'll be using the Roops. And on the right side here, I'll be using the Flex 3401 with my leveling fluid and jeweler's polish, along with the same microfiber pad and polishing pad for consistency. First, prep the pad with one light squirt of spray wax. Then prime the pad with a leveler or a compound and use your fingers to massage it into the fibers. Next, spread it in over a two by two area you're working. Use a slow speed to spread the product out evenly, then raise the speed to five for leveling the swirls. Work in overlapping motions, covering 75% of your last stroke, moving in horizontal and vertical motions. Work the product in until it's broken down and becomes a thinner, lighter color, which should take about 30 seconds to one minute, depending on the condition and the ambient temperature. The left side is being compounded with leveling fluid, a six inch microfiber cutting pad, and the Roops Bigfoot LHR21ES polisher on speed five. Remember, the trick to consistent or effective compounding is to remove any layers of sealant, wax, coatings, glazes, or any product that lies between the compounding pad and the top layer of paint. If the leveling pad encounters contaminants or fillers during the scratch removal process, the pad can wobble or oscillate out of its normal pattern, potentially causing swirls, holograms, and discomfort to the detailer through excessive machine vibration. So it's best to wash, clay, and strip any protective layers prior to compounding that would otherwise interfere with the direct pad-to-paint contact during the correction process. Next, wipe the used or broken down compound and inspect your work. It's not uncommon to go back for a second pass and work on a few random isolated deep scratches or what our industry calls RIDS for short. Spread it in with two. Then I stop. For the next step, I'm using a jeweler's polish on a six inch, 60 PPI jeweler's foam pad with the Roops polisher on speed four and a half. Since the paint has just been leveled, polish will remove the very light haze that remain and will enhance the depth and clarity of the paint prior to adding sealants and wax. This step is critical for show car finish. Now that the left side looks great, I'm gonna use the same pad, product, and speed, but simply switch the roops to a Flex 3401. As you can see here, both the left and right side look much better, but were achieved with two different machines. And at the end of the day, both were effective, but it comes down to your budget, your personal preference, and of course, a little patience in your quest for swirl-free, perfect paint. Well guys, I hope this gives you a better idea of what it takes to remove swirls from your paint instead of hiding them. Be sure to visit AmmoNYC.com for a downloadable PDF with all the tools and tips you'll need.